In the last video, we looked at using the Boto3 library and getting an idea of how to use the resources pattern that Boto3 implements to be able to access AWS services. In this video, we're going to go a next step further. We're going to use some of Boto3 to do some very common S3 things. So let's go ahead and just jump right on in. We'll open up our Python shell. We'll do our import of Boto3. Then we'll get our S3 resource with our S3 equals Boto3 resource and then with the string of S3. And now we have our S3 resource we can do stuff with. First thing we're going to do is we're going to get a bucket and we're going to get our GoJango playground. And let's go ahead and take a look at what's in our bucket. So we'll just do a 4f in bucket.objects.all. You'll notice that's kind of similar to how Django works. It doesn't implement the Django ORM by any means. It's just a similar syntax for looking at everything that's in that bucket. Then we'll just do print f.key. The reason we're going to do the key property on here is because the key is the what you would think of as a file name. So we'll let that run and it's going to give us, we have test.pdf and test.text. So that means we have two files in our S3 storage. Let's go ahead and look at what we have in our current directory. If we ls, we see we have test.pdf. So let's go ahead and download that test.txt file. So we'll do bucket.download file. We'll pass it test.txt. The first parameter is the key that's on S3. And then we're going to give it the file name we want to download it as. In this case, hello.txt. So we'll do an ls. You can see we have hello.txt and test.pdf. Now if we'll just cat hello text, you see hello world. So we've successfully looked at the files that are in our bucket and we've gone ahead and downloaded one of the files from the server. One of the next interesting things you can do is you can actually filter out results of what's in the bucket. So if you just do a for object in bucket.objects.filter, again similar to the ORM, but does not work the same at all. You would do a delimiter. This is going to be something, a kind of pattern recognition type thing to be able to find all of the files in this case that have .pdf. Actually, it's not going to find all the files that have PDF. It's going to exclude all of the files that have .pdf. In the Django ORM, it's inclusive. In this case, it's exclusive. In this case, it would be the same as doing .exclude with the Django ORM. So we're going to go ahead and loop through that and go ahead and print out the object.key. And see, now we have our test.txt and not our test.pdf. The things that you can use is you can use the bucket, you can use a delimiter, you can use the encoding type, marker, max keys, or prefix to do specific filtering. And I recommend you take a look at the documentation to get a better idea of how to use those. The final thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at creating and generating URLs to interact with our S3 files and our bucket. A lot of times you want to generate a temporary URL for someone to use, and if you've ever used Boto2, it's not the actual easiest way thing to do that I could ever figure out. With Boto3, though, it's super simple. In this case, we're going to set S3 to a new instance of a Boto3 client, and we want an S3 client. I recommend you look at the documentation to see some of the differences. Basically, this is just a lower level implementation of the resource. The recess the resource gives you a little better of an API to use. This goes like one step lower. So now we have our S3 and we can see that we've assigned it to a client S3 object. So now what we can do is we'll just simply do S3 generate pre-signed URL. We're going to pass it the actual method on the client that we want to call, in this case get object. And then we're going to pass it some parameters. We're going to pass it a dictionary. In this dictionary, we're going to say, hey, we want to act on the bucket of GoJingo Playground. And we want to act on the key or file of test.txt. In this case, it's going to generate a pre-signed URL for accessing and downloading the test.txt file from S3. And it's going to have a default expiration on it. So the URL will eventually expire. So we'll just copy this URL and open up our browser. Paste that in. We can just do an open with text edit. And you can see we have hello world. And so it worked. The interesting thing is 
This generate pre-signed URL doesn't necessarily only work with get object. We can also use a different function of list objects. List objects is a method on the client. So we'll generate our pre-signed URL for list objects, pass it our bucket of GoJango Playground, and we get back a URL. And we copy that URL and we go ahead and jump into our browser and paste it. We have XML that comes back that we can then do stuff with. And if you'll notice, we have our key of test PDF, and we also have our key of test.text. That's really it on using some of the basics of doing and working with S3 using Bodo 3. It's super simple, and you can take this knowledge and you can transfer it to other parts of the Bodo 3 library and using other resources. I think one of the really nice things about Bodo 3 is this generate pre signed URL. So with that, I really recommend you give Boto3 a look and give it a shot in automating your infrastructure because that's a lot of fun to do.